For many little boys and girls, a doll is more than a toy. It can be a friend, a sibling, a confidant. And some dolls can be cursed or possessed. Here are five dolls you wouldn't want in your toy box. A doll doesn't need to be cursed or possessed to give someone the creeps. It might just have a strange facial expression or be missing body parts from years of moving around. Or it may have witnessed repeated acts of cannibalism, such as the case with Patty Reed's doll. Patty, eight years old, was traveling to California in 1846 with her family and other pioneers, a group known to history as the Donner Party. As you may well already know, this group of travelers became snowbound and turned to eating bits of leather, mice, old bones, and finally each other. Halfway through their journey, the Reeds asked Patty to get rid of all her toys and other unnecessary items to lighten the wagon's load. Though she complied, Patty managed to smuggle her beloved doll beneath her voluminous dress. The doll, along with the entire Reed family, miraculously survived their hellacious journey west and was able to enjoy a comfortable life in San Jose. Patty's doll is now on display at Sutter's Fort State Historical Park Museum in Sacramento, California. While this doll isn't known to be haunted, it has a rather macabre place in history. It's difficult to look at it and not immediately think of little Patty Reed chewing on human flesh. Patty and her doll's experience is so compelling that a children's historical fiction book was written about it in 1956 and has been educating kids ever since. If short horror and weird stories are your thing, why not like and subscribe to this channel? New Orleans has a history rich with folklore and voodoo. Legend has it that during the 1800s, a daughter from an affluent family married a wealthy Scotsman, an angry, Jealous ex-lover of hers sought revenge and asked the queen of voodoo, Marie Laveau, for help. Laveau cursed the bride, a curse which came to fruition when the bride went into labor with her first child. The young mother died, but not before bringing a grotesque creature into this world. It is said this baby was the progeny of Satan himself. Laveau brought the baby home and cared for it up until her death. It's rumored that once the baby died, it was buried alongside her in the St. Louis Cemetery, number 10 to 1. The citizens of New Orleans feared the devil baby. People say it would hide in the shadows and alleys, wrecking havoc wherever it went. To protect themselves, townsfolk would carve fake devil babies out of gourds and hang the dolls outside their homes to frighten off the real one. Some of these dolls are said to still exist today, but are rare and highly coveted. In the early 20th century, new versions of the Devil Baby dolls began appearing around New Orleans. These were said to look exactly like the real Devil Baby, and because of this, these dolls were said to be possessed. Artist Ricardo Pustiano claims to have been able to buy remnants of the last remaining doll from that era and currently recreates them for purchase. Many customers have claimed these dolls are evil, following you with their glass eyes and moving on their own. They come with buyer beware warnings, because it appears the spirit of the devil baby is alive and well. Mandy is a porcelain baby doll made in England or Germany between 1910 and 1920, and donated to the Quesnel Museum in British Columbia in 1991. Mandy's donor had said she would hear crying in the middle of the night coming from the basement, and it wasn't until after she gave Mandy away that the crying ceased. Though the crying stopped for the donor, strange occurrences continued as Mandy took up her new residency at the museum. Employees say lunches go missing, only to turn up elsewhere in the building. Footsteps are heard when no one is around, and office supplies like pencils and books always appear to be in a different spot from where they were last placed. It took the museum some time to decide where to place Mandy. They say she couldn't be encased with other dolls because she had a tendency to harm them. Visitors to the museum say her eyes will blink or follow you wherever you walk. She also likes to mess with camera equipment whenever anyone tries to photograph or film her, although these photographs appear to be just fine. 
1972, Kerry Walton returned to his Australian hometown for his grandmother's funeral. During this time, he decided to face a childhood fear by visiting an abandoned building that had scared him for years. When he went to this house, he discovered an old marionette underneath its porch. Carrie felt compelled to take it home with him, and they've been together ever since. According to psychics, the doll was made 200 years ago by a Romanian gypsy for his son who had drowned. The gypsies believed in spirit transference and dolls would act as a new home for the dead. The doll has real human hair, and underneath the scalp is a likeness of a human brain. He was given the name Letta or Letta due to his European gypsy heritage or because the doll occasionally screams, Letta me out. Nothing evil has been reported surrounding this doll in recent years. In fact, after finding the doll, Walton's luck changed for the better and his collectibles business began to boom. Still some quirks allegedly surround Letta. It will rain whenever he's taken outside and hanging pictures may fall off the wall when he enters a room. Dogs bark and attempt to attack whenever they're near Letta, and people have said they feel inexplicably afraid and sad when they see him. Letta is also supposedly capable of moving on his own, changing positions while seated, and emitting a pulse while held. Since 1996, Elmo dolls have topped the holiday toy lists of children worldwide. There's nothing to be remotely afraid of when it comes to this childlike monster, until he threatens to murder you. Such was the case for the Bowman family. Back in 2008, two-year-old James Bowman had an Elmo Knows Your Name doll. The doll was programmed to recite its owner's name, along with various other personalized phrases. This particular doll not only knew James's name, but liked to include the word kill before it. Elmo would sing Kill James repeatedly until James's distraught mother Melissa decided to put it out of the toddler's sight. The doll only began spewing death threats after its batteries had been changed. Fisher Price, the manufacturer, offered the Bowmans a voucher for a replacement. It is unknown whether or not the family took the company up on their offer. Kill James? What was that? Kill James? If you enjoy short horror stories or odd tales like this one, Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.